In all these product launches, whenever a company shows up a processor, it's always square. And a lot of you have been asking me, why are processors square? And why are the uh, things that we make processors from, wafers, round? In this video, I'll tell you why. What's your minimum specification? Now, before you make processors, you must bless the wafers. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, the way we make processors is that we actually build the transistors and the wires on these circular things called wafers. Now, these wafers in the past used to be 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch. Uh, modern day chips are actually made using 6, six and 8 inch wafers, that's actually the most common but the leading edge processors are made on 12 inch wafers. So processors are square or well, technically rectangular, but let's just say square for now. And wafers are round. You sounds like you're going to get a lot of wastage when you actually make squares out of a circular uh, base. Now I'm going to go through why that base is circular first, so we can get on to why processors are square. So when you manufacture a wafer, you have a pot of molten pure silicon from quartz and the way you get an ultra pure uh, silicon out of that is you put in a seed crystal of pure silicon and you gradually draw it out rotating slowly as it goes this produces essentially what is a single crystal of silicon and due, just because you're making the molten silicon become solid the way that it grows out uh, is in a circular cylindrical fashion. You end up with a cylindrical silicon, what we call an ingot. Now, the uh, rate at which you pull and the exact uh, features, the exact uh, environment that you're pulling that uh, ingot into is how you get the size of your ingot. And the idea is that you get a full, long silicon uh, cylindrical ingot, you know, and modern day uh, ingots weigh three, 400 kilos. These are big, massive, long things. And the best way to think about it is if you think of salami. So if we just take the ingot as it is, or if we take the salami and we cut the salami up. Here I'm using a French salami. I'd much rather use a Romanian salami from Sibiu. It's really nice if you can find it at your local Romanian shop. But the point is when you cut your salami, when you cut your ingot, you're going to get what is essentially circles. Now, Typically before the cutting, you the ingots go through an amount of polishing to make sure that the ingot is you know, fully 300 millimeters in diameter, and then you cut into wafers. If you're going to turn that uh, circle into a square, you're already cutting bits off uh, the bits off the wafer already. Now, as I mentioned before in a previous video, uh, these wafers cost about $400 in their unused state, especially for 12 inch uh, leading edge uh, process nodes like a TSMC, Samsung and Intel. And another reason why they are circular, uh, the wafers, is because you have to then go through polishing them. Now polishing them is easiest when you can rotate it at high speed. And the best way to get an even rotation at high speed is with a circle. Another reason why uh, these wafers are circular is actually in manufacturing the chips themselves. Now, chips consist of transistors at the smallest dimensions, and then on top of that, you build metal layers and metal layers, which are essentially the wires going everywhere. And to do that takes hundreds and hundreds of steps, and it's through this magical process called photolithography that this actually happens. One step of this photolithography is actually depositing what we call a photoresist. You're essentially pouring a liquid onto the wafer, making it an even layer across. You shine light onto the wafer now with this liquid through a mask so that any bits of that liquid that is exposed to the light solidify and anything that's not stay liquid you can then pour the liquid off deposit your metal etch the metal and then move on to subsequent steps but the point is actually getting that liquid onto the wafer with a uniform thickness with a circular wafer you can spin the wafer at high speed 
and that forms your uniform layer. If you did that with a square wafer, then it would be quite hard to spin because you'd have the liquid flowing off everywhere and you wouldn't end up with a uniform layer. Not only that, some of these processes are actually done at high temperature. So with a square wafer, you would actually get a concentration of the heat density when you heat the wafer up at the edges and particularly at the corners, creating a weak point in the silicon. Don't forget this silicon is it's kind of like glass essentially. So with a circular wafer, you still do get an extra bit of heating on the edges, but there are no points for that heat uh, to actually affect the mechanical uh, properties of the wafer. So that's circular wafers. Why do we cut square processes from them? Now, the point is, it comes back to similar things as to when we were cutting the salami, cutting the uh, silicon ingot. You want a cut that goes straight through from edge to edge. And with a circular wafer, the easiest cut from edge to edge is literally just doing straight lines. So you end up with squares or rectangles. Now you could say, well, that produces a lot of wastage, especially if your chips are big. That means a lot of silicon goes to waste. Well, in this case, the silicon wafer is cheap part is the cheap part of the process. It's the manufacturing that is most difficult. So you want to make sure that each chip you make is absolutely 100% on there. Now, if you were, say, to cut hexagons, this is a, an idea that's been postulated to me in the comments. Why don't we cut hexagons out of the wafer? Because that means that there is less wastage of the silicon wafer itself. Well, if I show a diagram of how we tessellate hexagons, you can see that there is no straightforward edge to edge cut. You're going to end up hitting uh, hitting the next processor along and you cut, you'll end up having to cut around it. Now the tools to cut around it are a lot more expensive than the tools to actually just do straight cuts through. We could move to a hexagon way of making processes. This requires actually putting the tools to cut in a non-uniform, non-edge-to-edge way. These are a lot more expensive and just creates a lot more complexity and a lot more variation in the uh, cutting process. When these processes are laid out as squares or as rectangles on the wafer, they're kept a very small distance apart, and we usually call that the scribe line. Uh, this means that if there is a cut, there is a little leeway each way. Now, organizing scribe lines, saying hexagons, might be a straightforward enough process, but actually trying to cut them is where it gets difficult. So this is why we stay with square chips rather than going through anything fancy. Like I said, I don't imagine circular chips becoming uh, truthful anytime soon, unless, you know, somebody does a wafer scale circular chip and that's why square processors and round wafers are here to stay now an update for the channel uh, many thanks to the new 10,000 subscribers we've had in the last week you're amazing i love you all and we just hit a million views as well and it couldn't be possible with all of you watching and many more videos on how we make processors and all the little fun things in industry coming up soon